Now, today I will discuss uh, how the different uh, other conditions of the loading uh, and how to calculate the bearing capacity uh, of foundation under such loading condition. Because in other uh, classes, in the last classes I have discussed that uh, about the bearing capacity uh, calculation and the other bearing capacity calculation. And then uh, uh, there are the, the safe factor, depth factor, inclination factor all those are introduced in the uh, loading condition to get the uh, bearing capacity of the ultimate bearing capacity of the foundation. Now, uh, today's uh, class uh, I will discuss about the if the loading is not uh, uh, applied at the center of the foundation, if the eccentrically loaded uh, footing is there and then how to calculate the bearing capacity and then when we calculate the safe factor and the depth factor or basically the safe factor and uh, the ultimate load carrying capacity of the footing, then how to use those uh, loading condition that eccentric condition in the foundation, those things I will discuss in this uh, lecture. Now, first I will go for the uh, one way eccentric loading and then I will go for the two way eccentric loading. Now, first case suppose if I go for this now this is for the eccentrically loaded foundation. In all other cases that uh, suppose this is the footing and uh, this is the center of the footing. Now, suppose if loading is applied at the center or uh, if I take the uh, cross section of this uh, foundation or footing that this is the cross section and the loading is applied at the center of the building. In this uh, center of the footing, in this case the previous uh, formula we can apply, but if there is any moment or if the loading is eccentrically, then how to calculate this uh, bearing capacity of the foundation? First thing we can discuss in this section. Suppose if the loading is there is a moment which is applied here and this Q is the loading which is applied at the center and M is the uh, additional moment which is applied and suppose this is the B width of the foundation and dimension of the footing say this is B cross L. So, this is the dimension of the footing or we can say this is B cross L. So, this is this direction is B and this direction the dimension of the footing is L. Now, first uh, under this learning condition if the um, uh, loading if the loading is applied at the center or there is no moment then the uniform distribution of loading is uh, observed. Now, if the moment is applied, so the footing is distribution of the load below the footing, it will follow this pattern. So, this is the reaction of the soil which is giving to the foundation. And so, now as this moment is applied in this direction, so this will give you the maximum reaction that is Q max and this will give you the minimum reaction that is Q min. So, now this is one condition where <coughs> this is following in this pattern. Now, there is another situation where Q max is this value and Q min is, is a negative value or suppose this is the reaction, this is Q max 
And so, you can see that if we draw this portion that means, here the this, this side the reaction is this is negative that means, the tension will develop. So, we will not uh, as we know that that uh, soil cannot take the tension cannot able to take the tension. So, that means, there is a um, provision to give the separation between the foundation and the soil if the reaction is negative or if the tension force is developed. So, we will we'll neglect the second case. Suppose, this is our case 1 and this is a case 2. So, we will neglect the second case. So, that means, there is a case 1 which is developed if our E value is less than B by 6 and this is developed if E value is greater than B by 6. So, that means, uh, our one condition that E should not be greater than B by 6, if it is one way uh, uh, eccentrically loaded foundation. So, now um, we can calculate, we have to calculate this E max and E mean value. So, one condition, so no tension will be developed and so under no tension condition, this is one condition. So, this is for the no tension condition. condition. So, this is our one condition. The next thing is we have to calculate. So, that means, this E should not be greater than B by 6. So, that means, always E will be less than equal to B by 6. So, if E is greater than B by 6, then this tension will develop. That is not acceptable for this foundation design or we will avoid this kind of foundation. So, now we can calculate the E max and E mean. So, suppose E max will get by using this expression that Q divided by B L plus 6 M B square L, where Q is the load which is acting in the foundation and M is the moment which we are applying. And similarly, that Q mean will get this value is Q B L minus 6 m b square l. So, q is equal to total vertical load and m is moment on foundation. Now, the eccentric values is we are talking about that E is the eccentricity. So, that eccentricity we can calculate E is equal to m divided by q. So, first step we will calculate this if we know the m and q value, we calculate the E value that is m by q and then we will check whether this A is within this limit or not. If it is within this limit that means, less than equal to B by 6, then we can proceed. Otherwise, we have to redesign our uh, dimension of the foundation. We have to change the dimension or we have to redesign this foundation. So, that means, that is the first step. Then the next step, if we put this E value in our equation 1 and equation 2, then we will get E max is equal to Q B L plus 6 into E Q divided by B square L or if we take Q by B L common, then this will be 1 plus 6 E divided by B. Similarly, Q mean we can calculate by this equation Q divided V by L 1 minus 6 E divided by V. So, that means, by putting this E value in equation 1 and 2, we will get the uh, Q max and Q mean in terms of Q, P, L and E. So, this next first we will check this condition, then we will calculate E max and E mean. 
Another thing is that suppose this the footing is in this fashion that this is our footing. and loading itself is applied is not applied at the center it is applied at a distance of say e from the center so this is the loading q we are applying which is applied at a distance of e from the center and this is also one condition so in so, we can draw this type of figure. So, this is this type of figure we can draw. So, that means this hatch area because as the loading is applied at a uh, distance of E from, from the center. So, the effective area if loading is applied at the center then the effective area will be equal to L into B. So, that is the total effective area L into B. Now, because of this eccentricity or if there is moment is applied or both the cases because of this type of loading condition the load is, is itself is applied at a distance E from the center or there is a moment. So, because of this moment and loading eccentricity the effective area of the footing that means that now it is considered that this hatch zone is effectively taking the load and this white portion is, is not taking load. So, when we calculate the uh, ultimate load carrying capacity exp, uh, exp and use this expression. So, instead of using B we have to use this value B dash. and here this value L dash as it is one way eccentricity. So, L dash will be equal to L, but B dash is reduced by some amount. So, here this white portion it is written as 2 into E. So, this white portion is written this is 2 into so, white portion is 2 into E and this hatch portion is B dash. Now, here suppose this is the point where loading is applied where E is this value. So, now here uh, our effective area is basically reduced because of this loading condition. So, now when we calculate the this effective area. So, instead of B dash we can calculate that will be B minus 2 E because this 2 E is the white portion. So, B dash will be B minus 2 E and L dash is as usual as it is one way eccentric loading. So, L dash will be equal to L. So, when we calculate the effective area instead of using A we will use the A dash that is B dash into L dash because if the effective area without any eccentricity is A into B into L, A is equal to B into L, then similarly A dash will be B dash into L dash. So, for this first condition is for centrally loaded footing and this second condition is for eccentrically loaded footing. So, in this fashion, so first step uh, if I say again, so first step we by use if we know the aim moment and the load which is acting. So, we will calculate E value or if I know the directly this eccentricity of this loading then we will calculate this E value. From here we will check whether this E is less than equal to B by 6 or not. If it is less than equal to B by 6 then ok. Otherwise, the tension will develop and, and ideally we will, we will not allow the tension to develop. So, we will redesign the foundation. Then by using these two expressions we will calculate the E max and E min and then next job we will 
determine the effective width of the foundation that is b dash equal to b minus 2 e 2 e and l dash is equal to l and then effective area that is a dash will be b dash into l dash. Now, when we calculate this bearing capacity um, uh, of this loading, then instead of using this b, we will use the b dash and as this is one way uh, eccentrically loaded foundation, then we will use l and l dash is, these are both are the same. And when you, <coughs> when you calculate the this uh, say factors there also we will use b dash not b. <coughs> now, the next one is that uh, foundation with So, first ca case was the foundation with one way eccentricity, now the next case foundation with two way eccentricity. So, suppose this is the cross section of the footing. This is ground line. And this is B and dimension of the footing B cross L. Now, this is the dimension So, this one is B and this is L, L is the length of the footing and B is the width of the footing. Now, if Q is applied here, so this is say Q ultimate and one moment is applied here. Like the one way. So, this is one way eccentricity. Now, if the suppose this is x x and this is y y section, now if the same footing this is y y and again q ultimate is this one. This is the load Q ultimate and one moment that is m y and another moment that is m x both are acting in this foundation. Here only one moment is acting that is one o eccentricity. Now, if the m x and m y moment uh, with respect to x x axis and moment with respect to y y axis both are acting in this footing. So, then this is two way eccentricity. Now, under this condition so, suppose this is the E where this one is equal to E L because this is in terms of length and this is width and this distance is equal to E B. So, this one E L and this one is E B or you can write this is E X E Y and this is E x. So, here in this 
lecture will use E L and E B. Now, where this is the length and this is the B is the width. So, that means here again how to calculate this because here also in the previous cases when it was a one way eccentricity then our a dash was b dash and l dash where b dash is equal to b minus 2 e and l dash was equal to l that is for one way. Now, again for the two way eccentricity also effective area L dash will be L B dash into L dash, but here again. So, this is B dash. So, here B dash will be B minus 2 E and L dash will be A minus 2 E. So, here we will use in, in case of when you are talking about 2 E. So, we will use this is 2 E B and this is 2 E E L. So, this is for 2 A eccentricity. Again, how to calculate this E L and E B? So, E L we can calculate by E max E uh, M x divided by Q ultimate and E B will be M y divided by Q ultimate. So, in two way eccentricity, so when we calculate E L, we use M with respect to x x axis that is M x divided by Q ultimate and E B that is M y divided by Q ultimate. Now, when we calculate the Q u value, so then we will use the expression C n C S C d c i c plus q which is equal to d f into gamma n q s q d q i q plus half into gamma b dash n gamma s gamma d gamma i gamma. So, here c is the cohesion of the soil. So, here we know this is the expression suppose this is the general expression. So, here n c n q and n gamma these are the these are the bearing capacity factor and s c s q s gamma are the safe factor d c d q d gamma as a depth factor and i c this is i q and i gamma are the inclination factor. So, when you calculate this factor instead of using b or l we will use b dash and l dash and here also we are using b dash not b. So, finally, when you calculate the Suppose we know this Q ultimate Q ultimate load that means Q u into A dash. So, that will give us Q u into B dash into L dash. So, when you calculate this value, we will use B dash into L dash. So, this is a two way eccentricity and then one way eccentricity. Now, we will dis I will discuss about the various cases. Suppose the first case that I will discuss that is case 1. In this case, the condition is that our E L divided by L that is greater than equal to 1 by 6, that is one condition and E B by B that is also greater than equal to 1 by 6. 
Now, suppose if this condition arises that E L by B that is greater than equal to 1 by 6 and E B by B that is greater than equal to 1 by 6. In such case, what will happen? Suppose if in such case, so I do not able to avoid these things and if this case is still arising, then how we will get the, I will de, uh, design this condition. So, in that case, suppose this is the foundation and this is B. And this is L. In that case, we will get this type of effective area. So, this hatch zone will give us the effective area. So, that means here we will get this is B. 1, this is B and this is L 1. Now, here this is the eccentric point E, this is the point where this one is E L and this is E B. So, now when we calculate the from this area, because when we calculate the ultimate load, then we will calculate determine this effective area. Now, with this effective area A dash will determine by using this expression that half B 1 into L 1, this is half B 1 into L 1. And then I will calculate this, this B 1 is given by B into 1.5 minus 3 E B divided by B. Now, this uh, thing is been explained is uh, in B M Das book that is uh, Das B M 1999. So, where this value we will get uh, that you can directly use this value and then L 1 we will get a similar expression L 1.5 minus 3 E L divided by L. So, by using this expression we will get B 1 and by using this expression we will get L 1. Now, the effective length L dash will be the larger value of these two, which one is larger that is the effective area. So, effective length L dash is equal to larger value of B 1 and L 1. So, when, once we get the L dash, then the B dash will be because we will get A dash directly by this expression. So, this means B dash will be A dash divided by L dash. So, in this the larger value of B 1 and L 1 will give the L dash value and B dash will be A dash divided by L dash. So, we will get the B dash and L dash. So, once we get the B dash and L dash, then we can use this B dash and L dash to get the other factors bearing capacity factor or the safe factors and then to calculate the ultimate load carrying capacity of the foundation and then we will get the A dash this is half into B 1 into L 1, then we will get the total ultimate load that the foundation can take. So, this is one case if <coughs> this condition is this E L divided by L is greater than equal to 1 by 6 or E B divided by B is greater than equal to 1 by 6. 
Now, the next case or case 2 that I will explain this case 2 thing that this case 2. Now, in the case 2 that E L by L that is less than 0 0.5 and another condition that E b by b that is greater than 0 and less than 1 by 6. So, E l is less than 0 0.5 and E b by b greater than 0 1 and less than 1 by 6. In such case, the effective area will be as follows. Now, this is the footing now this hatch zone will give us the effective area. Suppose this is the B is the width of the foundation, L is the length of the foundation and here this one is the L 1. and this distance is equal to L 2 and this is the A E value. Say this is E L and this is E B, where condition is E B is greater than equal to 0 and less than equal to less than 1.1 1 .1 by 6 B and E L is less than 0.5 L. Now, this is the effective area under this second case. Now, here the effective area we can calculate by this half into L 1 by L plus L 2 into B. So, this is the effective area. Now, the effective length L dash is larger value of L 1 and L 2. So, about this L 1 and L 2 the larger value will give us the L dash. So, similarly, B dash will get from A dash divided by L dash. So, once we get this L dash which is the larger value of L 1 and L 2 which whichever is larger and then we will get the B dash by L dash by A dash by L dash. Now, in the case 3 where the condition is that E L L which is less than equal to 1 by 6 and E b by b which is less than 0 0.5 and greater than 0. So, E l by l less than 1 by 6 and E b by b greater than 0 less than 0 0.5. So, in such case in the case this is for case 2 if I want to draw the condition for the case 3, suppose this is length, this is B. So, in such case, effective area will be this one. So, this hatch portion will give us the effective area. So, this one is equal to now B 1 and this value will give us B 2, this is L and this one B. So, this this will be the point. So, this is E b 
and this one E L. So, this point this is Q ultimate. Similarly, this one also this is Q ultimate. So, now in this condition, so area effective area of this H zone will get that is half into B 1 plus B 2 into L and L dash that will be equal to L and B dash is equal to A dash divided by L dash. So, here we will get this A dash and L dash is equal to L and B dash is A dash by L dash. So, this is for case 3. So, next case that is the case 4. So, next case case 4, where condition is that E L by L, which is less than 1 by 6 and E B by B, which is also less than 1 by 6. So, E L by L less than 1 by 6 and E B by B less than 1 by 6. So, in such case the loading loaded foundation the effective area will be suppose this is L this is B. So, effective area will be like this. So, this one this hatch zone give us the effective area. So, this one is again B, this value is equal to L 2 and this value is equal to B 2 and this is the E that means, this is E L and this is E B. So, in this case, so this is B 2, this is B, this is L 2 and total is L. So, in this case effective area A dash, the effective area A dash will get that A dash is equal to L 2 into B, this L 2 if I divide into different portion. So, this one will be L 2 into B this area and the lower part will be plus half into B plus B 2, then this additional portion that is L minus L 2. So, this will give us the effective area. Again the L dash is equal to L and B dash is equal to A dash by L dash. So, these are the four cases. So, uh, by this using these four cases, first we will calculate this L dash B dash and then by using this expression we can you calculate this effective area. Now, the question is that here in the except the first case, case 2, case 3 and case 4 all the cases this L 1, B 1, then B 2, L 2 these terms are involved because here L dash is equal to L because L is known to us. So, we can determine the L dash, but unless we do not know the A dash it is very difficult to find the B dash. So, once we get the L dash we should know the A dash so that we can determine the B dash. Now, why suppose in this expression we do not know how to uh, what is the value of A dash because here B we know and L we know, but we do not know L 2 and B 2. 
Now, to use this <coughs> to determine this L1, L2 and B2, L2, now the uh, different charts are available. So, now I will show you the charts for this case, because in the first case, this values L1 and uh, this L2, these values are directly we can determine by using the given expression. But in the case 2, because here we should know the value of L1 and L2. So, in that case, if I use this chart, then we can determine this value. This is uh, taken from uh, this uh, Heiter and Anders 1985, they have proposed. Originally, the source it is taken from this uh, again BM Das book. This uh, chart, so we can use this chart that. So, here this, this axis represent E L by L and this axis represent L 1 L or L 2 L. So, from this point towards this direction, the value that we will get of this curves that we will give for L 1 L and towards this direction, the, the value that we will get that is for L 2 by L. Now, here this value, this is E B dash. into B. So, once we get this value, so this is for 0 0.167, 0 0.1. So, we'll, this side will get L 1 by L and this side will get L 2 by L, because this E L by L we can calculate. Suppose, E L by L and E B by B, uh, e B by B that we also calculate. So, once we get this value, we can calculate L 1 by L and L 2 by L. And as we know this L, so we can calculate L 1 and L 2. So, here we will determine the thing, these things I have already explained. Next is the case 3, here also similar charts are available. This is for E B by B and this is for E L by L. Similarly, for the first case, this is E L by L, this is E B by B, this is E B by B, this is also E B by B. So, here also we will get in this side we will get B 1 and B 2, here from this side onwards this graph this will give us the value of B 1 by B and here this side point, point from this point towards this side will give us B 2 by B. So, here we know the E B by B value corresponding E L by L value. So, suppose this is 0 0.8 and corresponding this value we will get this B 1 by B and B 2 by B. So, as we know B value, so you can calculate B 1 and B 2. Similarly, for the case 4, so here we should know the B 2 and L 2. So, this is this axis represent E B by B and this axis represent the B 2 B or L 2 L. So, here this is E L by L. So, corresponding so obtaining this. So, this chart E L by L. So, this chart will use to get this L 2 by L value and this E L by L, because here two charts here also point zero, uh, this chart represents the point 0 2 that is the value of E L by L and this chart represent the, again the point 0 2 that is also E L by L. But so, these charts representing the, uh, uh, by using this chart we can determine the value L 2 by L and using this chart this one we can use to determine B 2 by B. So, once we get B 2 by B and L 2 by L then we know as we know L and B value. So, we can determine this B 2 and L 2. So, once we get this B 2 and L 2, then we can determine the effective area and L is equal to L dash for the case 4. Then once we get the L dash, then by using the expression A dash divided by L dash, we can determine the B dash. So, in this L dash and B dash, we will use 
when you calculate the ultimate load carrying capacity of the footing instead of using B dash or B or L. Now, we will solve one problem. So, that will help us to understand these uh, things very clear. So, suppose this example problem, suppose this is the example 8.1. So, this problem will solve for one way uh, eccentricity. Similar case by using this chart, the, the presented charts and the expression that uh, uh, mentioned, we can determine the ultimate load carrying capacity of the footing for two way eccentricity also. Now, this condition suppose this is the foundation. So, this is ground line and one we are applying load and one moment. So, now uh, this dimension of the footing is 2 cross 2 meter and the depth of the footing is 0.5 meter from the ground line. Now, the density that is 19 kilo Newton per meter cube. 5 value is 32 degree and C value is 0. So, one way eccentricity this E value directly it is given say 0 0.18 meter. So, we have to determine what will be the ultimate load Q of this foundation that is the problem. So, this is the footing condition which is placed at a depth of 0 0.5 meter. So, d f is 0 0.5 meter and this dimension is 2 cross 2 meter. Then unit weight of the soil 19 kilo Newton per meter cube, 5 value is 32 degree C is 0. Now, has uh, this is E value. So, now in this question the C is 0. So, our Q ultimate that C N C part the first part as C is 0. So, that part is also 0. Now, we can write this Q N Q this is S Q D Q and I Q plus half into gamma here we will use the B dash because I is, is it is a one way eccentricity and we will not use B, we will use the effective width B dash. So, B dash into N gamma into S gamma into D gamma into I gamma. So, e S gamma S q as the shape factor, D q D gamma is the depth factor, I q and I gamma is the inclination factor. So, first we will calculate the E q value. So, q value is D f into gamma. Here d f is 0.5 meter into gamma is the 19. So, it will coming out to be 9.5 kilo Newton meter square. Similarly, corresponding to phi is 32 degree. So, if I use the mayor of table, so we can again uh, show you the mayor of tables. So, this is the bearing capacity factor tables of uh, which is presented by the mayor of. So, here we will use the mayor of expressions or mayor of bearing capacity factor. So, corresponding to phi is 32 degree, our n q is 23.2 and n gamma is 22. So, that value we will use. So, our and our n q is 23.2 and n gamma is 22. Here we calculate again the B dash, B dash is B minus 2 E 
so that is equal to 2 minus 2 into 0 0.1 inch. So, this is value is coming 1.64 meter. <coughs> so, these are mirror of bearing capacity factor. Now, again by using the mirror of and here this L dash will be L equal to 2 meter. So, again by using the mirror of corrections factor. So, S q that is equal to S gamma that we can get 1 plus 0 0.1 into B dash divided by L dash into tan square 45 degree plus pi by 2. So, that value we can we will get the chart from the chart that is uh, present. So, we can show you the chart that is the mirror of corrections factor. So, different factors is there and this is the expression. So, here for this uh, footing we will use the this expression that is for S q S gamma that is 1 plus point 1 here B by L, but here we will use the B dash and L, L dash, but L dash is equal to L and this tan square 45 plus 5 by 2 for 5 greater than 0 degree. And here because an other factor also used from this table, and here phi is greater than 0 degree. So, once we put this L dash equal to 2 meter, B dash equal to 1.64 meter and, X, and phi is 32 degree, we will get this bearing capacity factor value 1.267. Similarly, d q is equal to d gamma that is equal to 1 plus 0 0.1 d f divided by b into tan 45 degree plus phi by 2. So, here also we will raise this value from the table also here if we put d f equal to 0 0.5 b, b here in place of b we will use the b dash. So, this B dash is equal to 1.64 meter, phi is 32 degrees. So, this is coming 1.055. As this inclination part, inclination is not present. So, we can write that I q is equal to I gamma that is equal to 1. So, once you get these things, then by using this q u expression. So, this expression will just put all the value because in this expression q is 9.5 kilo newton per meter square n q is 23.2 s q is 1.267 d q is 1.055 then i q is 1 here then uh, gamma is 19 b dash is 1.64 n q n gamma is 22 s S gamma is 1.267, D gamma is 1.055, I gamma is 1. So, once we put all the value in this expressions, so we will get this value that is coming 5752.767 kilo Newton meter square, because this B dash here we will to put 1.64 meter. So, finally, the Q ultimate the load that is coming out to be that is B dash into L dash into Q u. So, this value is coming 1.64 into 2 into 752.767. So, finally, the value that is coming out to be 2, 4, 69.1 kilo newton. So, the answer this q ultimate that is coming out to be 2469.1 kilo newton. So, this is the answer of this question. So, that is we are getting this q ultimate. So, now if we want to find the net safe bearing capacity of the footing or um, uh, ultimate safe bearing capacity of the footing, then you have to apply the factor of safety and I uh, have already discussed how to calculate the net bearing capacity. So, here you have to apply the factor of safety here also. So, in this way we can determine 
the value for the eccentrically, eccentrically loaded footy. So, in the next uh, class, we will discuss that if this is for eccentrically loading and now if it is a layered soil, because now for this up to this we have I have discussed all the soil condition is homogeneous. Now, if it is a layered soil, then how to calculate the bearing capacity? If this is in the slope, then how to calculate the bearing capacity? Those things I will discuss in the next class. Thank you.